Hey guys, welcome into the Pucker Born channel. Today we're going to be going over the retinue from worst to first in an 18 to 1 format. Uh, this is based on my 2500 hours of playing the game. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So number 18 is going to be the quartermaster. Quartermaster falls short pretty heavily, far and away between anybody else. Uh, the truth of the matter is... 100 ammunition or 50 supplies each for medical supplies tools and supplies is just not good tools and supplies is the one thing that i look at as possibly good but then again it gets totally destroyed by the time you get to late game or ultra late game where you're facing things and you have 300 armor your armor gets totally chipped down to 25 50 supplies isn't is is gonna make a dent but it's not gonna make much of a dent uh it's not gonna fix the dent i should say in terms of the ammunition, unless you're specifically using a lot of range bros, it's just not that lucrative uh, for 3,000. I just I just can't get behind it. I mean, the only thing that makes it seem better is the blacksmith, where he can actually reduce the amount of tools being consumed. But even then, I just can't get behind this one personally. Number 17 may be controversial for some, but I'm going to be completely honest with you. I roleplayed my most recent uh, Iron Man, where I'm at 469 days I did with a Barbarian, and the Brigand was the first thing that I grabbed. The idea was I wanted to be a like a dick in my campaign. I wanted to take out as many caravans. I wanted to get all the materials and stuff that I could sell or the armors from the noble houses and so on. I wanted to gear up fast. And that was that was helpful. The problem was is that you don't see all the caravans on the map, which to some may be like no duh, but like you should be able to see a lot of these caravans. I or, or they shouldn't be uh, the, the caravan should have more to them. The reason why it comes in far down is be, or farther down the list is because when you look at the meta aspect as well, it's like, yeah, it's good under early on, and you can make up the cost of 2,500 crowns uh, by killing these caravans, but you're destroying relationships, which whatever, here or there, depending on how good you are at the game, you know there's a point where it doesn't really matter. But still i i just find that it's it's underwhelming it doesn't work to its full potential and i feel like the one thing overhype studios is missing in this game is legendary caravans caravans that have really expensive loot that are being guarded even by a champion that'd be fantastic i would love to see that but unfortunately it's just not the case and so it uh this whole the whole idea runs dry by the time you get to the late to the ultra late game so as we go into this number 16, just understand that this is where things start to look up a little bit. I like 16 and on a lot more than the first two. And a lot of it comes down to RP or into the meta realm. So let's kind of look at number 16. Number 16 is going to be the trader. The trader is 3,500 crowns. And what they do is it increases the amount of trade goods for sale by one for each location that produces them like salt near salt mines, copper, etc so and uh it allows you to trade at higher volume so essentially if you go to a town that has a copper mine and they would normally have two copper things of copper uh you get three instead so it gives you more supply to be able to sell in other places now what does this mean how does this actually pay off well it pays off by making up the difference of the trader the way i look at it because i actually do a lot of stocks and stuff i actually own my own company uh what it is is that you are trying to buy enough copper or enough salt or any of these things and you don't make a single dime of profit until you break even on that 3500 so that's what i keep in mind when i'm actually using the trader once you get past that then it's all pure profit um, but you have to spend some to make some that's really what this comes down to and that's why i look at it as more of an rp role than i do as a uh, meta role now from that also standpoint, you have to look at it from the campaign aspect. The campaign aspect is asking, uh, is it's it's not a bad asking price when you're talking about the trader, the caravan run, the trader run, whatever that one is. Um, this goes good in that regard, so I would use it there. But ultimately, long term, it's just um, there's just better options ultimately. So, number fifteen is going to be the scout. The scout costs twenty five hundred crowns. And uh, what he does is he allows it so your company can travel 15% faster on any terrain. It also prevents sickness and accidents due to terrain. So here's the truth about it. Most people play with mods, at least from what I've seen. A lot of people that come into Discord, they talk about that. 
uh, what they actually use. I use two mods in particular. I use the speed up mod and the pause mod. Why? Because I don't have time and I feel like the game is a bit slower than I'd like when it, now that I've played with mods and so on. So um, th for one, unfortunately mods do kind of defeat this a little bit, but let's pretend the mods aren't here. So I'm just throwing it out there for, for what it's worth. What this is good at is getting away from somebody pursuing you. So you're 15% faster at all times. So if you're being chased by something, this gets you away from it. Every 15 days, and I could be wrong, you can correct me in the comment section, but it, I believe that every 15 days there's an event. And if you're in specific areas, like for instance, the swamp, you can get sick. If you're with rat catchers, you can get sick. So there is that, there is that. Um, and he prevents that or accidents due to terrain, which can do blunt damage to you, crack skull and so on when you're in the mountains, whatever. Somebody does some trick, something goes wrong. He prevents that. So there is good here. I like what it can do. I like the survivability of the scout, but I feel as if there's something missing. I almost feel like the faster travel should be 20%. I think it'd be really good if you're RPing he goes really good with the band of poachers campaign so keep that in mind if you are running that give it a chance and uh, let me know what you guys think let me know what you think about the uh, scout as a whole as is number 14 is going to be the minstrel minstrel costs only 2,000 crowns it allows you to get 15 percent more renown per renown per action and also uh makes the tavern rumors more useful um here's what i'll tell you i've actually used this quite a bit more than i actually want to admit but uh, for what it's worth, the thing is, from, again, a trader's aspect, what you want to do is you want to make up the difference of what you spend. So if you're only spending 2,000 crowns, you know it's going to cost to get tavern rumors. Everybody does it irregardless because they want named items. But sometimes you don't get that. What you get is there's a temple to, to the west or there's, there's a crypt to the northeast. And you say, well, that's not very interesting. I'm going to skip that. Here's the thing. Those temples and crypts and all the full of treasures, uh, things that are being said at the taverns, those can make up the difference really fast. I mean, if you destroy a crypt and it comes out with three different items, like uh, you could have salt and copper and whatever, like a, a silver plate or whatever they, whatever it is that they get, right? That can make up 2,000 pretty fast, I mean, pretty easily. Um, and even more so with the caravan campaign, because the caravan campaign, you actually make 10% more for the items. And if you're friends with a certain faction, you can make even more money or just go to the Southern uh, the southern city states and, and sell everything down there as well. They are very good with the, the trader campaign or the caravan campaign because you get 15% more renown. If you don't know this already, you only get 66% of your renown compared to the 100% on any other uh, origin. Um, but you only get 66%, so if you add the 15% on top of that per action, that's 81%. That is a much more faring uh, thing for that specific faction. And granted, this isn't this isn't 14 for the simple fact that it's really good with the caravan campaign, origin, whatever you want to say. It's for the simple fact that you can make up the difference really fast and find very useful information at taverns that can honestly get you a named item faster. So... I like it, and it can pay itself off instantly, providing you do find a named item quickly. Number 13 is the Negotiator at 3,000 crowns. It allows for more rounds of contract negotiations with potential employers before they abort, and without any hits or relations. Uh, also, good, good relations with any faction to case lower, as well as bad relations recover 15% faster. This, this character probably should be higher, and... Uh, it's to, I use this one all the time. I think this is so underrated. Um, here's what you do. Essentially, look at it from this standpoint. If you use the negotiator, right, and you're doing like one of the house quests where they're like, hey, go to these three towns, come back in three days, and for every head that you kill, we'll give you 50 gold. You can say to that guy, be a total ass and be like, no, I want more. And they're like, fine, 60. You say, no, I want more. Okay, 70. No, I want more. I really can't give you more, man. This is about it. All I can give you is 70. No, no, no. I want more. And they're like, fine, 75. But if you ask me again, I'm going to pull the contract from the table. You're like, okay, fine. Don't. Jeez, let's not split hairs here. All of a sudden, you're going from 50 per head, 50 crowns per head to 75. That is a 50% increase on what they were offering. And you never hear any of the relationships. They're just like, you leave the room and they're like what the hell just happened right and i'm telling you i've had quests 
that were like 6,000 crowns and I kept asking for more and got up to close to a pretty close to a thousand. I may have reached a thousand at one point, but I'm just saying for sure. I'm thinking of one in particular. I just had the other day. Um, I went from, it was like 5,600 to 63. So it was 800 crowns, but that's pretty inc incredible. That's crazy. So that is awesome. And it goes great in terms of the role play aspect. If you're being barbarians, that's what I'm playing as. Um, and you can just be a dick to everyone and they don't care and you can destroy a faction 15% faster recover rate like that's amazing and anybody who does like you they're like man we should really like this guy I don't know why but uh, you know he's kind of cool like that's how the game looks at you when you're using the negotiator so I'm obviously a fan but more importantly you can make your money back on this very easily. Number 12 actually goes to the alchemist I feel like this is going to be kind of a shock to some people but I'll explain at the cost of 2500 you can get a 25% chance of not consuming crafting components used by you. Unlock snake oil recipe to earn money by crafting from various low tier components. And I will put on the screen exactly what you need to craft. When you craft the snake oil, it costs 50 crowns. You end up selling it for 650 and even more than that, depending on where you sell it. And uh, yeah, it can be very lucrative. Here's the thing, super easy to craft the snake oil. The snake oil is literally swindling everybody in the land. If you are a, <laughs> there's many ways that you can do this. The beast slayer is very powerful with this because of course they can get one more component when you kill a beast. Uh, you also, um, you also get an advantage when you're the trading caravan uh, origin because you're getting even more for the snake oil. Depending on where you go can be really effective. If you pair this with the agent, the agent can tell you where there's a famine in the land or it can tell you where there's a, a, a festival going on where you can sell these things, like a festival in snake oil, whew, beautiful. Um, it takes technically five snake oil uh, to make up the cost here. Because again, everything you do is based on making up the cost of the 2,500. I The reason why I put it ahead of the negotiator, and granted, for long term, I could see myself using the negotiator more. I can use it through every scenario. However, you can make stupid money with the Alchemist, especially depending on the run that you're actually using. And let's say you do craft something and you get that 25% of not crafting an item. I've had that happen where four of the or three of the four items I actually hit the 25%, which was crazy. Um, I remember seeing that one time and it was when I first used the Alchemist and I was like, holy crap, why did that like I didn't understand it. I wasn't I definitely wasn't reading into it enough. So the Alchemist is way better than I think it's advertised as. Give it a chance and see uh, what fun you can make of it because it's an easy way to get rich. Number 11 is the Recruiter at 3,000 crowns. Makes you pay 10% less up front for hiring new men and 50% less for tryouts. Makes between two to four additional men available to recruit in every settlement. Uh, it's not higher. It will never be higher than 11 for me. It's gotta be close to center. Um, and it could fall a little bit shorter, but ultimately the recruiter is so valuable for finding that one brother that is going to change your whole campaign and could find multiple brothers and change your whole campaign. I love using the recruiter to find the brother that I've been looking for. Um, you know, in terms of like, I love nomads personally, they're one of my favorites. Um, the more nomads I could find for like a thousand crowns would be amazing. And, um, I, I rarely find a, a nomad that I don't like. So this guy allows me to get that for people that love the thief. The thief is kind of hard to find. I mean, don't get me wrong. You come across them here and there, but I'm personally not looking for him, but I do notice that he's hard. He doesn't come up very often. So the recruiter will get you that. Um, in terms of saving money, I know people are going to bang the table and say you are saving money, but I personally don't think so because you're buying and selling, buying and selling. And if your save's coming, don't talk to me about it because your your saves coming you're not you don't even need the recruiter probably so i i will say i love it or you do need the recruiter but you know it's it works for you too rp wise i think it's very good uh i think it's a good you know like you can you can rp the recruiter and in terms of meta i feel like it is meta maybe not high-end meta but it is meta because then you can find the brother that you've been looking for your whole life i mean your campaign so anyways that's number 11. Number 10 is the Paymaster at 3,500 crowns, reduces the daily wage of each man by 15%, reduces the chance of desertion by 50%, and prevents man men from demanding more pay in events. Um, so, listen, the reason why it's 10 for me, and I'm going to be <clears throat> completely honest, is because 
Um, I know that this is going to pertain to more people who like specific brothers than me. Uh, that's why I'm bringing it up in this way. Yes, it has its good. It also doesn't have like the greatest outcome uh, personally. So, so again, you pay 3,500 crowns. You're getting the daily wage decreased by 15%, which you can add towards that total or, or not add, but like take subtract from 3,500 crowns. If that makes sense this what i'm trying to say is if you have 12 gladiators hedge knights oath takers anybody who costs a lot of money uh per day that 15 percent can make up for itself and eliminate the cost of the paymaster that's fine but i just i don't see the want for this because let's say the desertion right desertion happens from indebted well indebted don't cost anything daily so you're, you, that allows you to keep them at a cost, which, okay, fine. So then we look at the last thing is prevent men from demanding more pay in events. Now, this is the thing that's going to be ruffling some feathers. I don't like the swordsmen, the cell swords. Um, I don't like them. I, I don't like that they demand pay. I don't like that their stats per se. I do like things about them. Don't get me wrong. If we're talking about a multifaceted character who can use a use a throwing axes and also a pole arm in the back line or uh, can be even really great on the front line obviously they, they can do a lot of different things it just depends on what you're buying but you're buying something for so much money who's gonna piss and moan and want more pay and cause a ruckus in my group I just don't care about them personally but to each its own right no don't take any offense I'm just saying so for me the paymaster is more situational um, it does add not so much to the role play. I feel like it's just uh, almost a quality of life into meta. So, yeah, that's that's my opinion on the Paymaster. Let me know what you guys think about it. I, I am genuinely curious about that. Number nine is the Scavenger, and the Scavenger ranges here. I mean, it really depends on what you're doing. I so the Scavenger costs three thousand crowns. Uh, recovers a part of all ammo you use during battle. Recovers tools and supplies for every armor destroyed during or by you during battle. This is so good, and it, it is so overlooked, I feel like. I've heard people on Reddit for sure over a year ago. I haven't really looked at the Battle Brothers Reddit, but um, I will say this, man. Holy cow, this can be really good. So, like, if you're facing orcs, for instance, and you're just destroying their armor and so on, they have a lot of armor. If you're taking on a noble house, that's a lot of armor. Anything that has armor, you're getting tools and supplies back. So, here's what I want you to look at, right? If every... 20 tools 20 tools is worth an average of 200 let's be honest 250 let's say 200 right after so many battles you get into copious amounts of battles if if you have the scavenger through 100 battles and you're getting 15 tools so 100 times 15 is 1500 tools 1500 tools 20 every 20 tools is <laughs> this is crazy so every 20 tools is worth 250 think of what that is totaling out to holy crap like that is insane that is a lot of 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 money back in your pocket and that's not even including the actual ammo that you're using it may not be crazy i have noticed don't get me wrong i'm not stupid i i get that a lot of times you're only recovering three tools five tools whatever it is tools, man. Like, the battles that you're taking on, you're getting something back from it. Uh, the scavenger is just so scalable, and you easily make your money back. In terms of role-playing, like, or meta, I feel like it's more meta than role-playing, but, like, the role-playing aspect of it is, you know, you think of this little boy who's going out and doing, like, just picking up around the dead bodies and stuff all over the place, just so, he, you know, scavenging. I personally think it's kind of cool from a lore aspect. Because it just shows the brutality of Battle Brothers. Um, but yeah, just something to think about. I, It could easily be higher than 9. This is where, from here on out, like all these guys are, are great. Uh, really great. Like, there's, It's not as situational. So, anyways, yeah, that's my thoughts on the scavenger. Number 8 is the Cartographer at 2,500 crowns. Pays you between 100 and 400 crowns for every location you discover on your own. The further away from civilization, the more you're paid. And legendary locations pay double. This is easily number eight. 
Um, I don't want to put it any farther because of the scalability. Early on, this is insane. If you have 500 crowns in your pocket, 500 that can spare, like, you know, let's say you have 3,000 crowns, I would pay that 250. Even if things were tight, I would do it. Reason why is because after 10 locations on average at 200 crowns, let's just say average between 100 and 400 is 200. So that's medium. The medium will tell you that after 10 locations that you come across on the map will just about pay for the cost of this unit. Uh, actually, 13 locations end up paying the the cost or the cost, um, and that's not even how far away you go. Like, let's say you go to the edge of the map. If you find four locations on the edge of the map at 400, man, you're at 1,600 crowns just based on that alone. It's super easy to make that money back. It's it and it also encourages the player to to adventure venture out into the wilderness. You come across. A legendary location boom you're making 800 crowns so this is stupid stupid easy money stupid easy money I love it I, I think the cartographer is is sick the only thing I'll say is when you start uncovering a lot more of the map um, yes that those crowns matter but it's not as as prevalent like early on you have quests that say um, destroy these brigands that could be like it, it like okay somebody stole my freaking teeth okay go find him for me you follow the tracks and that that one quest costed you right in the beginning within the first 10 days it costs you um 300 crowns right and there's a raider in that group depending on if you're playing an expert whatever point is to do that quest it costs it got you 300 crowns but to just travel to another city you could come across two locations for 200 crowns 400 crowns making up the exact difference so while you're chasing somebody through the woods you might come across their encampment all of a sudden you have more money i'm spending too much time on this my point is you can make stupid money it's definitely worth having it is a freaking sick early game especially uh retinue to have number seven is going to be the lookout at 2500 crowns increases your sighting range uh by 25 percent it reveals extended information about footprints this is a very very good retinue um and it's very cheap for what you're actually getting the sighting radius is massive for protection if you're not playing whether you're playing with mods or not again i like to look at this from the non-mod situation uh it is fantastic for avoiding enemies it's fantastic for sighting uh lo special locations like we talked about just previous with the cartographer this can help you make even more money because you're able to see more. Um, reveals extended information about footprints so you can know what you're coming up on or, or walking into. Um, I don't feel like that's as prevalent. I will be honest about that. I just Unless you're looking for a specific uh, lindworm or a shrat or you're looking for uh, anything, any, any specific enemy, sure, that helps you. But where it really shines is with the Band of Poachers, that specific campaign, uh, for the simple fact that you know, the band of poachers, they can actually see in an encampment and tell you how many units are in there or about how many units. So say like Megan, Megan, what the heck? It'll say many uh, raiders in this encampment or whatever the case is. You can see it well beforehand you even get there. Um, it's, yeah, I don't know. You're also faster with the poachers as well. So that helps too. It, it pairs, this, the outlook just pairs with a lot of, a lot of other um, retinue people it just it pairs really well it doesn't cost much super effective um yeah i think I, i've pretty much gone over all of it if i'm missing something let me know in the comment section but uh pretty sure that's about it it's it's just an all around there's no negative it's great for rp and it's great for meta so really great class or great retinue number six is going to be the drill sergeant at three thousand five hundred crowns uh, makes your men gain 20% more experience at level 1 with a 2% less each level further. And uh, makes men in your reserve never lose their mood from not taking part in battles. This is so underrated, I feel. I, I could be wrong. I guess I'm in my own little box. I think that the Drill Sergeant is insane. And I'm hear me on this. Early game and late game. Now you might disagree with the late game, but I'll give you a reason why if you're playing the game honestly. Um, so the drill sergeant giving you 20% experience at level one, right? That's like having a student from the get. 
And even at level six, you're still at 10% more experience. You tie this in, the drill sergeant in, <laughs> this is crazy. You tie this in with student. After level one, you're getting 18% plus 20% on student. That is 38% XP, 38%. Do you realize what that actually is doing? I mean, you get a guy with bright student and this, you're over 50%. Like you're at 50%. It's um, insane. Uh, the other thing too, is you can go to the training ground, the training centers, training grounds, whatever it is in the cities. And you have the option from 35%, 25% and 10% over a series of battles. You realize the scalability, you know how fast you can rip through the freaking competition and get scaling insanely, insanely quick. And, and again, any brother that sits in your reserve is not losing any moods. That happens where they listen, low morale is worse than I think people, people give it credit for. Um, the percentages you get when you have a wavering flag against your stats is pretty significant. So from that standpoint, he's incredibly great. Now the ultra late game is where it becomes questionable. Do you keep him around? There is a point where you have to walk away, but if you're playing the game honestly, and you're not save scumming and you're letting brothers die, I personally, every time I play the game now, I try my best not to, when I'm doing a casual run, where I'm kind of loose and letting things happen, people die, sure, sometimes I'll save scum. I'm not gonna, I'm not absolved of that. But what I will say is generally when I play, I take my licks. And the drill sergeant keeps you bouncing back because you have the money, you can buy the brother you want, you can find a great brother to go into your, your, uh, your, uh, into your group and instantly become, uh, can catch up with the other guys pretty quickly. So again, I, I, as I said before, the drill sergeant is sick. I think he's, yeah, I think he's super underrated, but again, I'm in my own little bubble. So that's my personal opinion on him. He's great. So number five ends up being the surgeon at 3,500 crowns makes every man without a permanent injury guaranteed to survive uh, an otherwise fatal bl blow makes every injury take one less day to heal. This is so important in terms of the injury aspect of it. You know, when you're, especially in the ultra late game, this is only personified when you're fighting battle after battle after battle, because there's a point where you are just hacking everything in your path. Um, injuries can suck. I mean, it can really take brothers out for a long period of time. And you'd be surprised when it says one to three days and you take a day less off of it. I've found that I was able to get a brother back after a day because really it was calculated based on two days, not three, even though it said one to three. So, uh, yeah, I, I find it's very useful in that regard. The faster you can heal, the better off you are. The permanent injury situation is actually really good. If, if you're, uh, doing the farming, the, the brain injury, yes, uh, to have more resolve, <laughs> to make somebody stupid, to switch over to Dav Cool. The Dav Cool cultist is insane for the surgeon. The surgeon, I think, I, if I had a dollar for every time I've heard somebody say surgeon when it comes to the Dav Cool <laughs> campaign, then you know I'd probably be rich. The other thing too, uh, who would have thought that this guy was a Dav Cool disciple, right? Um. Besides that, saving a brother that you didn't want to die feels way better. But that's honest. Again, it's if you're playing the game honestly. Um, it almost fell short of five. I was going to say six originally, but the reason why it's a five is because this guy is what generates the drill sergeant. So, like, if you get him right away early on and somebody dies, boom, you get the drill sergeant right afterwards because he's not going to die. He's going to have a permanent injury. That's what you want for the requirements of a drill sergeant. So at the end of the day, he makes it all possible. So great, great uh, retinue guy. There's no downside and it has great RP as well as high on the meta train. Number four easily goes to the agent at 4,000 crowns, reveals available contracts and active situations in the tool pit tip uh, for settlements no matter where you are. You may say that 4,000 is pretty steep. I think that's the number one reason why people don't pick the agent. That's just my personal opinion. I could be wrong. Uh, but the agent is one of the best and I can't put her any higher than this. I feel like there's others that are just, just, you know, the templates, but, but she is insane. I mean, any situation you're looking for, you can, you can play to your origin strength. For instance, if you're a bee slayer and you need ingredients for alchemists for instance or you just want to kill beasts right you can figure out 
if there's any situations where there's a terrors or there's a there's a hexen or there's um spiders or something terrorizing the town or whatever it is from that standpoint right or contracts that are tiering to those those values as well like unholds and so on you can use that to your advantage uh to boost other retinue characters the other thing too is uh not even going from that standpoint let's say you want contracts that are more lucrative you know you can find those based on your origin as well or you can skip or or you can skip things that just suck or if you're the trade caravans again that whole situation you can find a festival or get more food you can find do you see how steep this is like how many areas evolve from this character you know again in real life knowledge is power in games information is everything um so the agent is power and i don't see why people don't take her except for the steep cost of four thousand crowns but i i would almost i don't almost i would guarantee you could make those crowns back and have an even more enjoyable experience with the quality of life that she brings to your to your brothers so that's my opinion and guys for those who do agree with me you guys know exactly what i'm talking about for those who disagree with me i would love to know what you think in the comments section number three is going to be the cook which costs 2,000 crowns, makes all provisions last three extra days, increases the hit point healing rate by 33%. Uh, in terms of the meta side of this, it's an easy 10 out of 10. 100% 10 out of 10. Um, in terms of the RP side of it, I'm going to give it like a 5 out of 10. I mean, it's not good, it's not bad. There's no real thing here. You can, you can make a story about your brothers and one being a really good cook or a healer or whatever. I think that the cook is an interesting retinue because... The, the healing rate, I mean, you're, you're a cook, you're not a, a doctor or something, right? You'd think that if if the surgeon had this increased healing rate on top of being able to heal your wounds faster, I mean, I'm sorry, but it would be number one. Because when you're playing out in the wilderness, which we're going to tie in with the hit points healing rate, um, when you're out in the wilderness, the thing that I feel like you're waiting on the most, at least I am, because I, I carry extra armor with me, a lot of times which i can swap out with guys but the healing you can't swap out hit points and if you're playing the meta which the big meta strategy of having stupid amount of hp where like if you have 100 hp and you get knocked down to 20 right that's that 80 hit points that you have to bring back takes a long time so you want to maximize your time in the wilderness to get that to come back up it always seems that the attrition of your hit points is what stunts your ability to keep fighting however this is where it's a it's a double it's a double whammy essentially so making all provisions last three extra days let's look at it like um so grain right grain is seven days let's just go with something basic right grain the thing everybody gets early on and late so if it caught if it's seven days that you get that grain and you tack on three extra day that's ten half of seven is 3.5 otherwise you could round up to four right and this is giving you three extra so you're essentially getting a grain and a half grain and a half in terms of the food when you're healing hit points what do you need more time right so if you're facing an orc camp and you took some licks from an orc berserker you need a, maybe an extra day maybe less than an extra day because you have to heal the hit points and you're getting like strange meat which is prolonging your time in the wilderness so there's this there's this constant cycle that's happening here uh it's insane when you really get down to it it's it's ridiculous there's no it is flawless the cook is flawless in my opinion two thousand crowns is the lowest it costs for any of these retinue the fact that it's cost two thousand crowns is crazy i think it should be at least three but don't do anything with it overhype this is great so yeah easily number three now let's check out number two number two is going to be the blacksmith at three thousand crowns repairs all body armor headgear weapons shields worn by your men if they are broken or lost because a man died increases repair speed by 33 percent why is this so important well difference between this and the cook is the fact that the cook is a revolving door it doesn't scale greater um if you have greater hit points, sure, it's scaling. It's helping you get your guys to um, to heal up faster. However, in this game, I look at the four stages of the game as early, mid, late, and ultra late. Why is this important? Because in, let's say, the mid, let's just say your armor in the mid 
portion of the game is about 150. In the late portion of the game is anywhere from two to 300 and from the ultra late on ends up being 300 to 400 armor, even, even farther than that. So why is this important? Well, you see, when we talk about the scaling of the 33% repair, it is insanely different. Or when you, well, when you watch somebody repair their armor from whatever it is to 150 or whatever it is to 300, it can take what feels like forever. Usually most people hold extra armor in their inventory to switch out, which is what I do. However, it's not always the case when you have legendary or named armor. Okay. Um, to not to say that you don't have that. And I know ultra late game, you're going to have a lot of named armors and so on. So you can swap them out. No problem. Whatever. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. I get that. But it is, it is insanely important to be able to fix that armor as fast as you possibly can, especially if you're in the wilderness, taking this long journey, destroying everything, going on against big uh, legendary locations, etc. The second portion of this is really based on if your save's coming. Now, I play it, I do my best not to save scum. There are some run playthroughs, I'm not perfect, I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, look at me in my ivory tower. No, it's not the case. Um, I do have runs where I've saved scum. Most of the time, though, I take my licks. Uh, I have plenty of campaigns that I could show you guys where I have 20 to 40 people in my in my uh, in their graves what are you going to say so <clears throat> what I'm trying to get at is when you lose somebody you get that armor back I don't care if it's 300 like a scaled coat of scales armor or a legendary or not I keep saying legendary um, or a named armor like you want that stuff back like it is imperative that you get that back because here's the thing if you go to a blacksmith, right, and you see a named armor in there, it could cost anywhere from 20,000 up to 60,000 crowns. So if you lose one of those armors, the value in game does not reflect it because when you go to sell it, it's like, oh, we'll give you, ah, we'll give you 5,000 for that armor. You know, that's not crazy. But if we're talking about you have to rebuy this armor, like if you sold it and had to rebuy it, yeah gonna break the bank so it's very important that you automatically the one time you lose a brother and he loses his armor that one time that you get it back is worth the 3,000 crowns it is bar none the biggest exchange in game that exists and that may be like well then how is this not number one because if the repair speed isn't enough for you the fact that you can get your named armor back even though or named weapons back even though your brother died well i mean that's for number one of course but nonetheless this is on the meta scale easily 10 out of 10 and on the role play scale again i'm gonna put it a 5 out of 10 so yeah number two finally at number one the number one guy and there's nobody even close to this guy i promise you that and that is the bounty hunter Bounty Hunter comes in at 4,000 crowns, significantly increases the encounter of champions. It says 3% here, but Lord knows it feels more than that. Pays between 300 and 750 crowns for every champion. Uh, starting out, what I have to say about this is it is a dream for everyone. I'm a theory crafter. I have kicked the meta as best as I can so that I can try all these different ways to beat the game, all these different ways uh, to have fun with the game. And uh, when I look at the RP side of it, it is perfect. It is perfect meta. It is perfect RP. Why? Because you're a mercenary band. You are trying to defeat the best of the best. You're trying to grow as and become legendary. How do you become legendary? You defeat champions. You defeat the best of the best. That is how you do it. And so you can role play this out completely on any origin that you want, at any point in the game that you want. If you can, um, if you get the bounty hunter you instantly make your money back within one fight. That's the other thing. All it takes, for one, you can go into a goblin camp, face four goblin champions, and just the payback alone, which this isn't even about the payback here, 300 to 750 crowns. That's not even what it's about. But for the sake of having fun with it, if you kill four goblin champions, you just about make the mark of 4,000. Not quite, not quite, obviously. That's that's assuming that you get 750. I get it. But you're already at least halfway, or about halfway, or more. And if you one Goblin Champion's sword, or pike, or whatever, pays the difference. 
Named items, you have to look at it from the same standpoint of what would this town sell this for? Of course the game gouges you hard for a named item. I get that. But still, if you kill that one raider schlogging through the freaking marsh, and he's got a 50,000 crown uh, armor on, you, you made, you just, like, that 4,000 means nothing. It means nothing. And I swear, that 3% means nothing either. When you get the bounty hunter, you find champions everywhere. Walking around, and, and like, little groves that didn't even matter. Like, you'd go to a, like, a ruined castle, whatever it is, like a ruined pick something right it's like you you'll find something randomly i've found crap crap amounts of guys and gotten some crazy armor but my favorite thing is going up to the barbarian the barbarians in the north and getting their armor they're my they're, aesthetically they're my favorite armor i love their weapons as well because of the ignoring armor of course and uh yeah i mean it's it's insane i honestly don't know what else to really say about it there you make your money back in one fight end of story make your money back into one fight and if you don't believe me take whatever it is that you find sell it in a sell it at the any of the citadels right and see how much it would be worth to buy back don't do that that'd be stupid but if you really want to because your save scumming well then do it there by the way if your save scumming it's not scumming it's not the end of the world i'm just saying everybody does it right so with that being said that's my full list of retinues um I'd like to know what you guys think. Is there something you feel indifferent or someone that I should give more attention to? Would you like to see a longer format of this? Uh, my thoughts on this after 2,500 hours? And uh, yeah, let me know in the comment section what you'd like to see next, at least uh, from opinion standpoint. I'm gonna be making more videos, so stay tuned for that. And uh, yeah, hit the like. Be nice, share, share some of the love. So without further ado, I will see you in the next video.